Welcome to Red Tastic. Story 1. A few months ago, when I, 18 male, was still in high school, my stepmom and dad approached me and told me they have fallen into hard times over at their restaurant and that they need to use my college fund for their business. At that time, I didn't really have any set plans for college, so I reluctantly agreed, even though I was going to use that money to eventually attend a skill course or start something of my own. It was around 7k which could have jump-started my life. Anyways, I still let my dad use it. Since I was not going anywhere, my parents offered me a job at the restaurant. It's sort of a small mom-and-pop joint and they barely have hired help, so I was really reluctant. But my folks emphasized that they would be fine with me living at home with no strings attached as part of the package. However, the pay they were offering was shockingly less than minimum wage. I was taken aback, but back then, they just told me that that was the best they could give considering financial circumstances. The whole thing was not my ideal vision of how I would be going at 18, but given that they were sort of family and struggling with the business, I decided to give it a shot. That was the wrong choice. Fast forward to the present day where I'm breaking my back at work with no social life and no future prospects, struggling day by day on below minimum wage. And then I come across something which absolutely shocked me. My stepsister, 17 female, who's about to graduate high school, is apparently applying to colleges. I asked her how she's gonna pay her way through that since I know she's the least likely to get picked up for scholarship. I was at home talking to her when she casually mentioned that her mom, my stepmom, is paying over 20 grand just for her first two years. My job practically hit the floor. I had no idea that they had that kind of financial capacity. And even if they do, why the hell am I being underpaid? Or why has their restaurant been struggling for the past whole year? Didn't make sense. I was just feeling so frustrated and confused that I decided to confront my stepdad about it immediately. I was determined to get to the bottom of this. If it's true and they're supporting my sister's expensive education, why couldn't they afford mine or at the very least pay me a fair wage when they clearly had the means? But instead of giving me a straightforward response, my dad dodged the question and changed the subject. Basically told me off and said he's very tired and that we can talk about this later. After that, a few days passed, and the whole thing had not left my mind at all. I was super restless and just tired with my life, so I approached the folks again and asked for a proper pay raise, even if it was just to see their reaction. I felt that it was only fair considering it's my college money they took for the restaurant and the fact that they were obviously able to spend a whole lot for their daughter's tuition. To say that things escalated quickly would be an understatement. The argument that ensued was intense. My parents refused to give me more money, claiming that they needed every penny to send my stepsister to college for the next four years. They went even further and accused me of being entitled and wanting to be pampered. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I was asking for special treatment. I simply wanted to be compensated fairly for the work I was doing. The fact that they used my college fund for their business and now were spending thousands for my stepsister's education, while paying me peanuts for their restaurant felt like a slap in the face. So now I've decided to take a stand and refused to work at their place anymore. Even more, I told them I wouldn't move out or pay rent or anything until they pay me what's fair or make things right. It wasn't just about the money, screw the money. It was and is about being treated like an actual family member who is respected and an actual human being. My parents are completely losing their mind calling me a petulant child etc. Am I the a-hole? Update. I got them on board. After a few heated discussions and the average tantrum throwing, they have agreed to start paying me a normal wage and asked me to come back to work at their place. I'm also going to be taking a few night courses just to have a proper game plan for the future, which my folks have also agreed to foot the bill for. I'm grateful, but it's also the least they can do after the whole ordeal. You're not the a-hole OP. Anyone in your position would have felt exactly the way you felt. Your parents spent your college fund to support their business and they hired you to work there. 
but they pay you less than minimum wage. Of course, you would be upset that these same parents are ready to spend that much money on funding your stepsister's college. They owed you a proper explanation. They might not give you your college fund back, but you definitely deserve a raise. Glad they gave it to you. I'm also glad that you're thinking hard about your future. You can't work under them forever. You need to look out for yourself. Story 2 My ex and I had our son, Levi, when we were both 20. It was already a bad relationship that wasn't meant to last, but we stayed together. She had a lot of personal issues herself and had a serious drinking problem that got worse after he was born. We both clearly weren't prepared to be parents, but she had no interest in being a mom at all. She walked out when Levi was two. I had a lot of financial help from my parents, and because of that, I was able to care for my son and go to school. Levi is 17 now, and we're both doing fine. Two years ago, my ex came into our lives again. She had gotten herself cleaned up and was looking to reconnect with Levi to make up for her mistakes. Levi decided he wanted to meet her, and since then, they've been spending a few times a month together. They get along great, but Levi still says he's not looking for her to be his mom again, which she understands. Her and I get along for the most part. She really is a different person now. In July, she had some housing problems and couldn't move in with her mom. Levi asked me if she could stay with us until she found a new place. I know it sounds strange having an ex move in, but we had an extra bedroom and I really didn't have any issues with her, so I agreed. She's been here almost a month and it was fine at first, but lately she started having problems with things Levi does. She doesn't like the amount of time he spends playing video games or that I don't have a specific bedtime for him, or that he doesn't ask me permission to drive his car to the store to buy something. My son is very responsible, gets good grades, wakes himself up early, and does all his chores without ever being told. I feel he's allowed to decide what he does with his free time and when to sleep, which really isn't later than 11. She feels he should play video games one hour max and be in bed by 9. There have been a few times where she has tried to dictate what he does, and it's turned into arguments between us. The other day, she sat me down and said she doesn't like the way I'm allowing him to do what he wants. We've had these talks where she pushes her suggestion on me and gets mad if I disagree so many times already. I finally got fed up and snapped at her. I told her that I've been the one taking care of him for 17 years and she has no say in how I raise my son. I put a lot of emphasis when I said my, implying he's not hers to get my point across. She was in silent shock and didn't say anything, but she had tears in her eyes. After my little outburst, she got up and left me alone. She's been fine with Levi, hasn't tried to parent him anymore, but she's not talking to me at all. What I said was true, but I don't know if I was exactly an a-hole for saying it to her. Obviously, allowing her to temporarily move in was a mistake and I'm glad she'll be out soon. But was snapping at her and saying what I said make me an asshole? Not the a-hole OP. She abandoned him. She's incredibly lucky that you've allowed her back into your lives, let alone your home. And while she may be his birth mother, she is not his mother and needed to have that boundary laid down. Also, those rules sound more reasonable for a much younger child. She's obviously trying to make up for lost time in a completely unproductive way. It sounds like you've done an amazing job raising your son in horrible circumstances. I hope this all works out. Now for some comments. Not the a-hole. She may have given birth to Levi, but she has zero experience at raising a child or being a parent. So what she thinks or says doesn't matter. I think she had some hallmark movie ideas that moving in with you would mean you would be a family and it would be like she never left. By being blunt with her, you made her face reality, which she didn't like, but she needed. Not the a-hole. I had a chuckle about bed and screen time for a 17-year-old. I think she's been reading too many magazines. Your son is 17, soon to be 18. He's made it clear he holds no animosity towards his mother, but he doesn't want a traditional parent-child relationship, nor should he. You managed to raise a responsible young man, and you two have a rhythm to your lives. She probably carries around a lot of guilt for walking out of his life. However, I don't think you did anything wrong pointing out she's too late to influence the man your son is becoming. I'm leaning towards not the a-hole. It sounds like it was a clear upfront that she wasn't mom, 
and won't be filling that role. Also, your son is one year or less from being an adult. It sounds like he's a responsible young man and being given leeway to exercise adult responsibilities, to include managing bedtime, money management, and coming and going within reason. All this is necessary, I feel, for older teens before they are on their own. It's heartbreaking for her because she can't regain motherhood. But that's a fault based on the decisions she made many, many years ago. Eventually, walking out on her child and family. Story 3 So this is a long story. Sorry for coherency. I'm at my wit's end here. My father passed away from terminal cancer in late 2016 and all the way up to that point, he made me swear to him that I would never give my mother a cut of the will or anything after he was gone, but would never elaborate as to why. However, I always felt at the time that this was cruel and that my mother had done her best to take care of him. He was older and extremely sickly, but continued to work every day until he retired. I was three years into college when he passed. My dad left me a sum of money, 30k, that I received shortly in the new year. He left me my childhood home. Before I received the funds, my mother requested 50% of the inheritance, as it was what she deserved for taking care of him. I was still devastated from his death and agreed to this arrangement. I paid for all fees related to the estate proceedings over the year. 3K. In 2017, I logged into my bank account to find that the entirety of the sum, 13K, had been transferred from my account into hers. When I questioned her, she admitted that she had fallen into Nigerian prince love scams and had been wiring obscene amounts of money internationally. And then what hadn't been wired had been consumed in admitted drug binges. Continuing to be stupidly gullible, I forgave her. I lent her a credit card on the understanding it was solely for food and gas. A month later, I checked the card balance and found out that she had maxed out the card, 7.5k. When questioned, she told me she had given my card to her then-boyfriend. I immediately reported this as credit card fraud. The charges were reversed, but as I never received my 13k back from my mother, I did not tell her this and demanded that she make payments to me to make up for some of the damage. She made payments occasionally, and eventually I recouped only 5k, which was in late 2018. She has since stopped paying anything. Even though the deed has yet to be completed, my brother approached me with a very agreeable deal to rent my childhood home from me and has been making payments since. My mother didn't want to live in the home. She found out about this arrangement and immediately demanded 50% of the rent payments, which I had been giving her only 30% out of guilt. I've been working with lawyers to complete the transfer of the deed, where it was revealed that the money I've given her, with the purpose of paying property taxes, has not been used for its intended purpose. Now I'm dealing with thousands of dollars in taxes. I told my mother that I would not be giving her any of the rent until I was able to pay off the credit card that I had to pay for the taxes with. This did not go over well. I am currently in talks with my brother for him to buy the house off of me, which I am more than delighted to sell, 110k. My mom expects to receive half of the proceeds. Reddit, I want to forgive, but would I be the a-hole to take the money from the sale and run? Now for some comments. Not the a-hole. Run, run fast. She was never supposed to have access to the money and she has already taken advantage of you. She feels she deserves money for taking care of her husband. She gave her boyfriend your emergency credit card. Nigerian scams. To me, it sounds like she's going to feed you any line to get money and either make it sound like it's not her fault or make you feel guilty. I wish you the best of luck. Sometimes the most toxic people in our lives are related to us and that's why we feel we need to keep giving in to their needs and wants. Hopefully, you really will have the power to walk away from her. Not the a-hole. Before you do anything else with that money, invest in a really good therapist to help you work out why you are giving her thousands and thousands of dollars that history tells you you will never get back. Guilt can be addressed before you go broke, you know. There are certain parallels to you giving your mom the money and her giving it to her boyfriend. You are both easily manipulated into handing money over that you need to live on. You both should know better and you'll both never see that money again. You're the same sort of person and if you want to change, you look at ways to make that happen rather than wishing things were different. Before you make the moves to sell the house, you've got to do some things first. 
get a new bank account at a new bank that your mom cannot access or that money will be gone too. Get a credit monitor because she could take out loans or open cards in your name because I assume she knows your SS. Get all your important documents in your possession if you don't have them already. Get some therapy because you're deep in guilt with your mom. Look into your lawyer for help with the money she took from you and or to protect the money you'll be getting from housing sale. You're not the a-hole except for the fact that you ignored your dad's wishes. But you are horribly naive if you think this stuff won't continue. Protect yourself, take the money and don't look back.